Welcome back to What Arty Nibs with General Disturbance. This is an Object 140. It's a Tier 10 Soviet medium tank and it's located on the south spawn of Redshire under the command of Captain Ashstorm. Battle is underway. Now, this tank was supposed to be the replacement for the T 54. But instead, they went ahead with the development of the Object 430, which, as you now know, is a sort of heavier, more heavy medium. Well, Captain Ashton's taking his Object 140 over to the castle. So let's see how he gets on. Now, the gun. It's the um, 100mm 320 Alpha. This is a medium tank. It's quite a good flanking tank as well. Fast, very mobile, hard hitting, good DPM. Reload time is 5.33 seconds. The gun depression is quite good as well. It's got 6 degrees of gun depression, which is slightly more than you'd find on most Soviets. It's already got a hit on the Lorraine. And critical hit there on that T 55A. Yeah, gets a good hit there on the turret, but he took a round in return. And remember, that guy's got more rounds available. Ooh, now he took another round, but he did get a hit. And takes another one. Unfortunately, that means it, that makes it an unfair exchange. He lost more hit points, but he got one back on the T-55A. Now they've all gone on to the other side because that um, Lorraine is in reload. So he's not going to want to engage with anyone until he's got uh, 37 seconds gone. And I don't think it's up yet, but T-55... Well, that was, uh, I think that was uh, just critical damage on his uh, tracks. Oh, he over, he over angled. Got one through. 375. High roll. Now, I think the Lorraine has finished his reload, but he's now dead. The 110 got him. Now, the big worry on situations like this when you're moving backwards and forwards on the spot is that the enemy artist gets to know what you're doing and he just plants the shell straight up the middle of the castle to hit you. Oh, another nice round, but it's a low roll, 289. And he gets one in more into the engine bay. That's an average. Bounce that one off the gun. He's damaged the gun, but he's fixed that with his repair kit. Using the large one. Trying to use that gun depression to its maximum advantage. Okay, it looks like the 110's coming around this side as well. Might be time to go. Well, the 110 just took a hit. And another one. Now, is any of those, either of those are one shot? Not quite. I think C55A is low. Oh, he had a fire there. And he, I think he's a one shot now. Oh, just missed the opportunity to put him out of the game. And that one is a nice round. Now, T55A, he is a one shot. Oh, we lost the 110. We can take the T10 out of the game. In fact, both of them are now. I think they're both one shots. Get one into the AMX 30B. Oh, Scorpion. One round in. And get behind cover.
Looks like the AMX 30B is running away. In fact, he's going around the castle trying to come back behind us. We were detected there, so somebody is spotting the gates and could see us. But the thing is, if they saw us, then the scorpion... It's the hawk! Okay, the hawk saw us. There he is. And that means he's spotting for the scorpion. And I'm pretty sure that AMX 30B is coming around the other side of the castle to try and come in from behind. He hasn't been spotted. He went into the dip and hasn't been seen since. So we kneel over there, but we can't get them. Ah, right, the, um, the bat chats found him. And we took around from Udes. Okay, nice turn around there. Now let's push on that AMX 30, but we've got to watch out for the meal. Now we're in the dips, so the Emil might not be able to see us. Here's the MX-30. Bye-bye. Nicely done. Now, the question is, can we get shots on the Emil from here? They're watching the castle. The Scorpion's watching the castle. If we're not in that position, it's going to be very difficult for him. Bat chat's watching this side. Now, yeah, can we get shots through the gap? Oh, now the ISU was visible there. He might have been able to get shots in the ISU. But we don't want the Udos to see us. Oh! And the meal made a classic error there, drove in straight away without even knowing where everyone was. One into his lower plate. And he's fluffed that one up. One into his lower plate, he's a one shot. And the next shot will be the end of it. Oh, and he's gone. But we took a hit from the Udes into the tracks. So the Udes can see us right now. He must be either beyond the hill or on the hill. Okay. He lost sight of us the moment that the Emil died, or well, six seconds after. Back chat's the other side. They can't see us into the castle. The Emil's gone, which means we can now approach the enemy without by bypassing the scorpion and coming at them from a different angle. Now, can you get shots on the Yes, he can. This is what I saw earlier. I was, as he went past, I saw that you could see the ISU 152 through the gates on the other side of the castle. He wouldn't be able to know we were there. And we can see somebody's firing into the castle grounds, but they failed to hit. Yep, rounds are going in. But they're missing us. That Udes, I think, is who was firing in. That's the one. And I think he is up on top of the hill, or rather on the back of the hill. And that's why the T-30 can't see him. Batchat's going up ahead. He's going to look for us. Oh, shots over there. Oh, it didn't go through.
it looks like the Udis has actually retreated to that little hollow where the RT1 goes. And there is an RT still in the game. It's an M5355. Now he might see us when we go around this corner. If the six sense goes off, yes, he is looking for us. Well, he didn't see us. And looks like the enemy is now pretty much well surrounded over on the east side of the map. So Captain Ashlong's going to try and deal with Yudas, then the Scorpion. And it's the standard Scorpion, not the... Um, it's the standard, standard Scorpion, not the um, Scorpion G. Not the American version, but the new plain version. It looks like they've got the IS-7 sorted. Oh, the Udas came out! Bad decision. Very bad decision. Now he's vulnerable. Two lovely hits there. He's using the uh, heat rounds. And he's got the Udas! Now, just needs to get to the um, dip before the Scorpion relocates in there. If he does relocate... Oh! The RT was there. So, we know where the RT is. <laughs> the RT is in the dip, or beyond the dip. Well, it's just the last two to, to kill. The M5355 has actually got four kills. The Scorpion hasn't, but um, he has been trying to get some damage. But that M53, M55 is going to be very, very dangerous to approach. Well, the IS-3 is making his way up this way. The T-30 and the 50TP are going the long way round and I think they're trying to get um, to the hill so that they can shoot on the Scorpion or the M5355 as soon as he's located. Yeah, Captain Ashton thinks they're both in A1 and that's probably a reasonable guess. He, he could have been in the dip but somebody, somehow, he had to have spotted Captain Ashton as he was approaching the dip. And since there was no other tanks alive at that point, I think he was actually in Grid Square A4 when he shotgunned Captain Ashton. He could actually see him approach. So here we go. That's the two minute hooter. Well, I don't think the M. 355's there now. Oh, he is! I'm wrong! And he's he's killed with one shot. A little more different with um, a heavy tank. Even if he'd hit the IS-3, I doubt he would have wiped him out with one shot. Unfortunately, the Object 140 is, or was, badly damaged at the time that uh, Captain National took it forward, so he only needs to get a shot near him to, well take him out and the scorpions down and that's game so let's have a look at the end of battle stats that was a good game for captain Ashton. it's a first class tanker in fact it's a, his first first class tanker in the object 140 he managed to get uh, a fire perfect a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage and a bruiser medal um, for getting at least five critical hits. And he also picked up an epic medal, the high caliber. He certainly did a lot of damage in the game. 7,191 was the win eight. And if we look at the team score, we can see that uh, he got 5,942 hit points of damage. Um, the next high score was the 50 TP with 4661. And after that was the IS-7, 4,133. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, When it came to kills, it, 
<coughs> the 50 TP managed to get three kills. Spat Trap 12 times managed to get three. But it was that M5355 who got four in the end. So he was the high scorer. And when it came to base XP, it was the 50 TP who got the highest 1,260 hit points. Uh, hit points. Uh, XP. And um, Captain National got 1,146 experience points. Let's have a look at detail. He fired 28 rounds in that game. He got 24 direct hits, 20 penetrations, and 5,942 hit points of damage, of which 610 were at more than 300 meters. He received 14 hits from the enemy, 5 penetrations, 8 non-penetrations. Shows the uh, armor on the 140 is actually quite good. Uh, but yes, they were overmatching him uh, with their shells, uh, and they were able to penetrate on some. And I think that was the Lorraine 40 ton who managed to get most of those through. Uh, also received two hits as a result of Splash, one of which was fatal. Um, block damage of 2,550 hit points. He spotted four enemy vehicles, damaged seven of the enemy, killed two of them, and did damage assistance, or spotting assistance rather, of 1,218 hit points. On a premium account, he earned 97,059 credits, and after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables, and he, mem he did use some consume uh, premium ammo, I think, on that game, uh, of course, because he shot at the Udes with premium ammo, he ended up with 14,063 credits. He received two bonds for the game, and he also earned 1,719 XP, times four for the first victory of the day, picked up 6,876 altogether. So a pretty good game, and he says it's his best game in this tank so far. But I think there's still plenty of potential, and I'm sure that he will exploit it. Uh, so if you enjoyed that replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel, and hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.